Hey, what's up guys? Today we're gonna to be taking a look at a new preview feature in Java 14 called Java Records. So we now have a new class in the java.lang package in the module java.base called record. The thing is, is it's the abstract and you cannot instantiate it directly. So I'm gonna show you what is actually going on there and what is an actual record. So we'll come back to this in a second. All this demo is going to be available for you on my GitHub page and I'm going to show you how to set this up. So it's a basic clone and then we start a Docker container and start everything up in a J shell. So let's take a look at that. Uh, over here, get clone. You're up and running in no time. All right. So we're going to go into that directory, Java records tutorial. And in here now, all we got to do is run.sh and you're up and running. So before we do that though, let me actually go back to the tutorial, which is records. So records really are there for us to now have a way to model our data classes. So we all do this, right? You have some class that is just basic data. So for example, a lot of people use the, um, the example person, right? A person, first name and all that kind of stuff, last name. And you just want to encapsulate that data. So I came up with a little bit better example here, which is a location. Location is basically a fixed point uh, on the globe, right? So like a latitude, a longitude. And that's all I care about. I don't care about behaviors. I just want the data. But in Java, I don't have any other way to model data, to aggregate all those data points in it, but put to do it in a, in a Java class. And that's fine. I mean, that's always the way it's been, right? So we've got a custom to, you know, passing this state into our constructor, assigning it, obviously doing some validation. I didn't do that here. Probably make this immutable as well, which I am a big believer in. And then having your getters and setters, setters if they're not immutable. Uh, think Java beans, right? And then you have the usual suspects of overriding equals hash code to string. And you know, if you have any variants of some overloaded constructors. So there's always that ceremony code, right? And what we usually do is we say to the IDE, right? Ah, just, just do it for me. I just couldn't be bothered with this anymore, especially writing my own hash code and equals. Forget about that, right? So a lot of us even go uh, further than that and, and use a third party API like Lambok and use the add data annotation. And that's fine. I mean, that's, that's just standard protocol these days because we don't really have a native way in the JDK to have that code auto generated for us until now, right? So this whole record, if you will, this whole class can be shrunk down into what's called a Java record now. So let's take a look at that. If you go to demo.jsh, now you notice it's in a basic J shell format. So we're gonna, I'm gonna walk you through this in a second here, but that whole class can now be reduced into a record, one line. So we're saying record, the type, and then we have our state passed in. Everything else now gets auto-generated. Now, if you don't like what's auto-generated, you can absolutely override that. Now, there's some limitations that we're gonna get into, okay? But largely, you can do anything you want, all right? So right now, what this record is saying is that we're creating a type, and the type is really this state, and an instance of that record, so I'm instantiating three instances of that record, becomes an aggregate of those values, okay? So in here, in this case, I'm, I'm on an island called Santa Maria uh, in Portugal. And so I actually went to get the lat long here of, uh, of that location of where I live. And then I made a copy of it. And then I also have uh, India here, uh, New Delhi which uh, has its uh, long and, and lat points as well. So you can see here, I didn't really have to create that big class. And over here, what's going on is the Java compiler is actually gonna create all the uh, two string, the equals, the hash code, the constructor, the assignment, uh, the accessor methods, all that's gonna be created for us. So if we just go take a, a little trip back to the uh, record class here, you can see like I said, it's abstract. You can't actually uh, extend this guy or instantiate it or anything like that. That's not your job to do that. Uh, Java C does that for us. And it makes these three uh, methods abstract. So equals hash code and two string. So it's, it's actually in charge of doing that for us. And when we actually print out these uh, records now, so for example, these are the two strings of those, um, uh, those records. 
you'll see here if I actually execute run.sh, it's actually going to be by default executing that demo script and I'll show you how in a second. You can see here that we get, so again, this is the top uh, level over here, MVP Java JDK 14 records demo. And then you see the two strings of uh, India and Santa Maria here, and you can see that they've been auto generated for us. So we didn't come up with that stuff. Then you can see that we're printing the actual state, latitude and longitude over here. Okay. Now, hold on a second, right? What happened to those getters? I don't see get latitude and get longitude, right? Here's a little comment for you to guys remember that when you download from GitHub. And that's really the case because with records, when you define a record, that's your public API. You get what you get. <laughs> you don't, you don't, you can't actually have a sort of decoupling between a public API and the representation of your state. That goes out the window. If you really need that, go back to a class, right? So over here now, it becomes very important to name things properly, right? Like for example, you might not want to call that uh, X and Y or something like that because, you know, you used to be calling a get latitude before so you could hide you know the fact that it was x inside the representation of your class you can't do that anymore you lose that flexibility so very important now good names going forward and as we all know naming is tough right it's always nice to criticize other people's uh, names that they come up with but when it's when it's your turn you kind of you kind of realize it's not as easy as it looks the other thing is is i'm printing out the hash codes of these guys over here so i'm taking these two copies printing out their hash codes, and then actually seeing if they're equal to each other, right? So if we take a look down here, you can see that uh, Santa Maria and Santa Maria copy, the hash codes are the same, and they should be because their lat longs are the same, okay? So yes, true, they're equal to each other. But if I compare Santa Maria to India, right, the lat longs are completely different, so that, you know, we would expect that to be false, and it is. So everything is working as uh, it should be. Okay, so this is a really great way, compact way to model, to aggregate all your state and data classes without going through the whole, you know, ceremony or using third party uh, frameworks or anything like that or libraries. It's built in, it's baked in, it's native inside uh, the JDK right now, which is fantastic. So next question, can I override this? I don't like the two string. Uh, where's, where's my validation? I need some static factory method because I got like seven instance variables inside the constructor, you know, and I just want to have like a dot of method to create some of this stuff for me. Absolutely, we can do this. Let's take a look at how to do that. So over here, we have another example, but this time you'll notice that the record is a lot bigger, right? So you'll see that the curly braces, right, from here to here has a body now with code. So over here, we're kind of going back, like visually, before I even explain this, visually you can see that this is getting big again, right? This looks like almost like you're going back to a class. So my advice is, sure, you want to do some validation, go for it, override the record. If you find yourself, you know, overriding all the methods like equals, two string, hash code, and uh, getters and stuff like that, forget it. Go back to a Java class. You'll be much better suited for that, right? So just because we can override it doesn't mean, you know, we should, except for the bare minimums, for example, validation and a static factory method or something like that. You'll see here that I've added some uh, static um, members over here, you can't add instance uh, states, right? You can't add, let's say you wanted to add an extra uh, member variable, it has to be static, okay? So over here, and that's, that's just one of the limitations, like I said. Uh, over here, here's the public constructor. This is the constructor that was actually auto generated for us. You notice that there's no uh, parentheses or member variables in there like long, latitude and longitude. You, sh you don't have to put that, it already knows, okay? So that's called the um, canonical uh, constructor. Hope I'm pronouncing that right. Uh, so it'll actually know to do that. So the nice thing is, is that I find that more maintainable because later on, if you add stuff, you don't have to go in, you know, modify your constructor again. So I have some validation here, which everybody should have for the latitude. I left out the longitude just because I don't want it to be too big for the demo. And you'll notice what's missing is I'm not assigning, you know, I'm not saying, you know, this dot latitude equals latitude. I don't have to do that. It does it for me, right? Which I really like as well. So again, good for maintainability. And over here, for whatever reason, I said, I don't like the two string. I'm going to have my own two string. And then I go back to my getters, right? I want to hide the representation, let's say, of my, um, of my record. And then I come up with a little static method here, origin, that um, 
comes back with the, the zero, zero point, basically, okay? Now, I didn't have a dot of method, really, that I could use because there's not that much state in this, in this one here, but, you know, it could be a static factory method, no problem. So over here now, I instantiate that record, just like we did in the, in the other example, and I go back to printing its two string, or my two string now, and you can see here, I'm, I'm going back to using the getters instead of the, um, the actual state, which was dot latitude and dot longitude before. And I'm getting the origin, the static method here that's producing the zero, zero point. So let's run this. And in JShell, you see you have to do slash open. And I put everything under slash root for us. And I'll show you how I did that in a second. And the file is called demo override record.jsh. And you can see here that we have our own uh, overridden method lat long, right? This one up here. Okay, there's no square brackets or anything like that. And then my getters go and get the information instead of dot latitude dot longitude and here's just my dot origins two string method which brings back my zero zero point right so these guys default latitude default longitude are zero zero so that's basically records in a nutshell right is to really pack to aggregate our data and just the data right and nothing but the data so just the fields and nothing but the fields in these records and have this code auto generate for us. So if you want to exit the JShell slash exit, and the last thing I kind of just want to uh, show you is what's in that run.sh file. Again, you have to have Docker running, okay? So I'm, I'm running a Docker container. I'm gonna clean up after myself, so it's not gonna linger after we're done. When you exit, the container's gone. I'm opening up an interactive terminal, and I'm gonna host bind mount a directory on your machine, right? The current working directory. So whatever is in this uh, directory here, which is basically the demo J shell files, all these files. And I'm going to mount that in the slash root inside the container. And that's why when I said uh, slash open, you know, I knew to go to slash root because I'm the one that created this, this run.sh file. We're going to go get the open JDK um, version 14 on Docker Hub, where it's a public registry of images. We're gonna execute by default the command jshell. That's why the jshell shows up automatically in the container when you start it with run.sh. And again, this is a, a, a preview feature. So if you guys have some feedback on this, in, or if you find a bug or, or whatever, you can go, uh, go to the blog post that I wrote, and there's a link at the bottom of the article for the Amber list. And that's where you give developer feedback and you know, they're gonna be enhancing this kind of stuff or, or at least things around the record to enable things like pattern matching. And there's some other stuff that's gonna come down the pipe. So it's not just a boilerplate killer, although you know, I just showcase that it is. Uh, and then we're gonna specify here the default uh, file to execute when the container starts up. That's why the demo.sh was executed, the output. So head over to GitHub get that get the, get those um those um demos and and work with that have fun with that hope you guys enjoyed that if you guys uh, enjoyed that you can let me know by going to the youtube page which you're already on right and send me a, a little comment there put a little doop doop, a little thumbs up and don't forget to uh, obviously subscribe all right, guys, that's it for me. I'm going to go back to my uh, regular job <laughs> because uh, I got to pay the bills. But I uh, hope you guys enjoy that and uh, see you online. Ciao.